Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we're talking about background blur and how to create it in Lightroom and Photoshop in a five minute tutorial. Let's get into it. So first, why do we like background blur? And I think there is a bit of an obsession over it in the photography community, particularly in wildlife. And one of the reasons is because it, and I would say the primary reason, is because it allows us to isolate our subject. We can really bring out the details in the subject and accentuate those details if we're blurring out the background and the foreground and isolating that, that subject in our image. And that's why it's so beautiful. We talk about buttery bouquet and all these like terms that I think are hip, but ultimately I think it comes down to isolating your subject vis-a-vis -vis the foreground and the background. And a lens like this, which has a very narrow depth of field when combined, telephoto and aperture combined, controlling for distance, can provide a really, really, really narrow depth of field which allows you to isolate your foreground background. But you can also achieve that, and I should say this, with a lens that's you know, a 500 millimeter f7.1 or a 600 millimeter f6.3, as long as you're close to your subject and your subject is relatively far from the background. And so that distance between you, the photographer, and your subject, the subject in the background, is also a huge factor here and, and arguably a bigger factor. But this allows you to cheat a little bit and still get depth of field even when you're a little bit further away from your subject. And just an example of what's possible here when you are using you know, a 500 millimeter 7.1 when you're really close to your subject. So this is from a trip that I took to Machia Seal Island, which is in the Bay of Fundy. It's fascinating history and an incredible place. It's contested, the United States and Canada both claim um, that they control it, but anyway, I digress. So this image was taken from a hide and I was maybe five or six feet away from this Atlantic puffin. And you can see the extraordinary level of detail in this image and just how incredibly beautiful it's rendered with this lovely blurry background. And that was all achieved at an f7.1 aperture because I was really close to the image. But certainly in many cases, we're not able to achieve these ideal conditions of perfect lighting and perfect setting for the shot. And this is an example actually from the same trip where I um, was uh, same hide, same situation, but the subject, the puffin was coming at me. You know, it's not a bad background blur, but I thought this would be actually a good candidate for demonstrating how we can achieve even more of a, of a separation between our subject and the background. Now, there are a lot of techniques we're just gonna be talking about blurring the background here today and not really focusing that much on contrast or other sharpness uh, techniques here. So I, I thought we'd do this first in Lightroom and then in Photoshop, it's very quick and easy. So with Lightroom's new tools around masking, it is very easy to mask the foreground and the background. So here I'm just gonna select background and I'm going to drop the texture and clarity of the background. In addition, you can drop sharpness, if you want to enhance it even more, and drop um, dehaze. As you dehaze, dehaze is an extremely powerful tool, and what it's doing is, uh, is mid-tone mid contrast, so it, you can see it getting less contrasty. It also brightens up that background, which can be an aesthetic choice, right? Like you could choose to brighten it up, or you could drop it to accentuate it even more. I think actually in this case, we don't really want to drop it too much because it starts to look artificial, maybe even raising the brightness of the background. So just with an edit like that, I'm going to just um, kind of crop it so we can look at the before and after. So this is what it looked like before. And you can see, you know, particularly in the grass in the background, it's a little bit distracting, right? And the foreground. And this is what it looked like after. Much more blurry background. Looks really nice, I think. Uh, we could absolutely tweak this more, maybe make it even more contrasty because it was a very hazy day. Uh, bring up the colors, decrease the colors depending on saturation, vibrance, and depending on your techniques. But ultimately, I think that's a pretty nice result. So that's how we would do it in Lightroom. And now I'm going to reset the image and I'm going to bring it up in Photoshop. So I can show you how to do it in Photoshop as well. All right, so we're gonna do this kind of quickly in Photoshop. I've got it open in Photoshop here. We're gonna select Neural Filters. 
If neural filters is grayed out, that's because Photoshop has not properly connected yet with um, its cloud server, so just give it a couple minutes and it'll connect. Then you go down here and select Depth Blur, and this is in beta testing, and toggle that on. It's under Photography. If it's not available as a toggle and you have this little cloud symbol, it's because you haven't downloaded it yet, so just download that add-on. Once you're in Depth Blur, there are a number of different settings, and it does take a little while to process um, your image, so just bear that in mind. I prefer focal distance where you select the focal point. So I've selected the focal point here on the Puffin. You can also select focus subject where it's going to use AI to select the um, image or the subject of the image and blur out everything else. I like this a little bit more because it creates, I think, a little bit more depth of field, which looks more natural. Then you can change the blur strength. I have it set default to 50 here but you can push it up to 100% or 100, you know, 75% or something like that. But bear in mind, it is gonna take a little bit of time to process that image. So until you see an okay here at the bottom, your image is still being processed. And it might take a while to process because I have a pretty fast machine here and it still takes a, a little bit of time. So, you know, it's a longer process in terms of the processing piece, but it's very easy in terms of the settings. Okay, and then once once you have the image that you know has been processed, if you save it, which is on a Mac, command save, it will save it and put it back into Lightroom. So we can close Photoshop. And now we're back in Lightroom and we can easily compare the two images and see what Photoshop did. So it's pretty subtle, but I think it does a phenomenal job. So if you pay attention back here to the grasses again behind the puffin, this is the original image and that is the one with depth blur. Now you tell me, but that looks great. <laughs> the puffin is nicely blurred, uh, nicely sharp rather, and not excessively blurred out. And you know, you have an image that has a nice blurry background. Okay, and one last thing I want to mention is there's nothing that stops you from layering the clarity and texture approach in Lightroom on top of the depth blurred image from Photoshop. So if you were to take this depth blur image and select the background, you could then layer additional clarity reduction and texture reduction to really amplify that depth blur. So that's what I got for you today. Hope it's helpful. I'm probably over five minutes, but let me know if this is useful and if there are other sort of tutorials or things you'd like me to cover in the future. Take care, be well, don't forget to get outside. Bye.